Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this lesson on ocean currents. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief understanding of what ocean currents are without trying to get too technical and then we're going to focus on the two SQA questions which are how to describe the movement of ocean currents and to explain how they circulate energy around the globe. Those are the two bits you really need to focus on. Okay, let's get started. This map shows you the ocean currents of the world in very basic form. They are in fact far more complex, but only this simplified, um, this simplified diagram will help you to introduce yourself to the basic concepts. You'll see that there are red arrows and those represent shallow warm currents and there are blue arrows that represent deep cold currents. First of all what you need to understand is that the ocean is not simply a static pool of water but that it is dynamic. That means that it is moving all the time and it moves in the shallow areas, but it also moves at great depth. Where the water is warmer due to absorbing heat from the atmosphere, which of course comes from the sun, ultimately, um, that warm water is less dense. That means that that warm water will be at shallow depths. It will be nearer to the surface of the ocean. Where you see blue arrows, that water has managed to, be, to become cold and cold water will become more dense um, <clears throat> and therefore it will sink towards the bottom of the ocean. So here at the equator you can see that we have some warm water and that warm water is uh, forced into this winding path for reasons that we will come back to and ultimately it cools down and once it becomes cold enough it starts to sink and that's because it is no longer warm therefore it is no longer so buoyant it has become more dense and it sinks towards the ocean floor. Part of the reason that it sinks is because as I say it is more dense and that's due to um, the, its uh, salt concentration increasing. As it becomes cooler and more dense it literally becomes uh, heavier and more able to sink towards the bottom of the ocean. So the basic concepts are is that there is a flowing movement of water within the oceans and that is a continuous cycle of flowing water. Where the water is warm it will move closer to the surface of the ocean until it reaches a point where it cools down, at which point it sinks to great depth and moves at depth through the ocean before eventually warming up again and moving towards the surface. All right. In this image of the globe, what we can see is um, a static image at the moment of the ocean currents. Um, sorry, <laughs> just taking me a wee minute there to get the, the software to play. As you can see, at the equator, the ocean currents are flowing in an, in, from east to west. And they're doing this mainly because of the surface winds that move them along. As we take a closer look, you'll see that those equatorial currents moved by surface winds from east to west hit the coastline of South America and are therefore deflected northwards towards the Gulf of Mexico. In the Gulf of Mexico, um, they then move, they then because of their their energy, they continue to flow northwards into the Atlantic, which then becomes the North Atlantic Drift. Now the North Atlantic Drift carries this energy into the North Atlantic, moving alongside Britain as it does so. And it actually makes Britain artificially warm 
If you look at the other countries that are at the same latitude as Britain, you'll see that we share the same latitude as much colder climates, such as Norway, northern um, Canada and Russia. At around about this point, the uh, warm currents cool and sink and return as cool currents that we cannot see in detail on this image southwards. The main uh, currents that you need to know are equatorial current that moves east to west across the Atlantic Ocean at the equator, the Gulf Stream that recycles uh, the current into the Atlantic, and the North Atlantic Drift, which moves uh, the energy, the, the warmth, the heat energy uh, into the North Atlantic before cooling and sinking. And the sinking currents uh, return the cool water along the ocean floor to complete the cycle. Those currents are called the Labrador Current because they move past the Straits of Labrador and the Canaries Current because they move past or at deep at great depth they move past the Canary Islands. So here's what the exam question would look like. You can see they've given you a simplified, in this case extremely simplified, diagram of the ocean currents. We will focus on the Atlantic Ocean as our case study. Here's the equatorial current. Here's the Gulf Stream. There's the North Atlantic Drift. Here's the Labrador current and there's the Canary current. The dashed lines are, as you can see, cold currents and the solid lines are the warm currents. The warm currents move closer to the ocean surface and the cold currents move at much greater depth. The first thing we need to do is to describe their pattern. Now, um, that's really quite straightforward. The first thing you need to know is that it broadly the, the currents move in a clockwise spin. And the name for that is a clockwise gyre. G-Y-R-E. And you can see here that this is what you would need to say. The currents flow in loops, otherwise known as gyres, clockwise in the northern Atlantic. Now there's a mark for knowing that they flow in loop-like gyres but there's also a mark for knowing the direction and, of course, the named ocean in which that is the case. It's important to know which ocean you're talking about, because in the southern Atlantic or Pacific, it works in reverse. You see anti-clockwise gyres in the southern Pacific. So make sure that you get that correct. Clockwise in the North Atlantic. Warm currents move from the equator towards the poles. An example of this would be the North Atlantic Drift. And of course, cold currents move from the poles back towards the equator. And an example of that would be the Labrador Current. Um, it is important to emphasize that the, the currents have different temperatures. So warm currents move warmth, they move heat energy towards the poles and cold currents return cool water from the poles. Those are the two basic mark winning concepts, and you get an additional mark from being able to name an example of the currents that do this. So how do we then explain um, how they redistribute the energy now that we have, it, now that we have described? Well, first of all, the equatorial current, as I was mentioning a minute ago on the animation, those are powered by uh, surface winds. The wind itself is enough to move the warm water that's close to the surface of the ocean from the east towards the west across the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see here, ocean currents are influenced by prevailing winds. The word prevailing wind means the most common wind direction. And the most common wind direction at the equator here is from east to west. And the energy is transferred by friction to the ocean currents. Literally, the wind forces and blows the water along. 
Remember, this is warm water, so it's sitting at the surface of the ocean, and the wind hitting the ocean blows it along. That explains how heat is moved from east to west across the equatorial current. Now, the equatorial current would in fact do just loops of the earth at the equator if there weren't land masses in the way. Um, and what happens is that South America deflects the equatorial current northwards. Um, North America deflects the Gulf Stream northwards as well. So you can take your pick which um, uh, ocean current you want to focus on, but the point you want to communicate is that land masses divert ocean currents. You will need to name the land mass. Now, the next point is a little bit more complex, but once you break it down, it's really quite straightforward. Um, due to the fact that different areas of water receive different levels of heating, so some water is near the equator and therefore obviously absorbs more heat, some of it is near the poles and absorbs less. Um, therefore, it has different levels of density. Um, the density of the, wa of the water also is uh, related to how much salt the water has. Uh, warmer water contains less salt. Colder water, denser, heavier water near the base of the bottom of the ocean floor has more salt. So all we need to say here is due to different levels of heating or saltiness, uh, the water has different levels of density. So the water has different levels of density due to the different levels of heating or saltiness. And that explains why some of the water wants to stay near the surface and some of the water wants to sink. And that explains why how energy is being moved around. This results in chilled polar water sinking and spreading towards the equator and displacing warm water polewards. Here what you're expressing is this idea of the, conve of the conveyor belt element of it, that there's constant movement and that as warm water rises, cold water is drawn in to replace, to replace it and um, there's a constant cycle and flow. This paragraph here is worth spending some time with if you want to develop full explanations. Um, the reason, uh, uh, the uh, gyre-like movement of the uh, ocean is due to the Coriolis force. Now it depends where you are in your studies regarding the understanding of the Coriolis force, um, but basically the spin of the earth causes um, geographical features such as hurricanes uh, to spin. Um, and the oceans are no different. The oceans also have these gyre-like spins, and you'll notice they are anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere and clockwise in the northern hemisphere. That's all you need to say. The Coriolis force deflects currents to the right in the northern hemisphere due to the Earth's spin. Uh, it's actually quite a tough question, this, because you've got eight marks to score. You need to remember to describe the movement and explain the movement, and it's relatively technical. Um, so make sure that you're focusing on some of the easier points to learn here, or perhaps focus your attention on the one larger point which contains multiple marks. Take your pick. Don't forget to learn the names of the ocean currents because they can be really handy for picking up extra marks. Equatorial, Gulf Stream, North Atlantic Drift are the warm currents, and the Labrador Current and the Canaries Current are the cold currents. And they're an easy way to pick up some extra marks. Okay, um, that's it. I hope that was helpful. See you next time.